Ray Tomes of the Cycles Research Institute on solar cycles in general. Right. Ray, what are we looking at? Well, we're going to have a look at the range of solar cycles from the longer ones to the medium ones to the shorter ones. We've just done some stuff that uh, related to the ones of 154 days in relationship to that. Um, we're going to look at the um, some of the longer and shorter ones. Uh, in this case, we're taking the um, amplitude of the 11-year solar cycle, and it's an autocorrelation against itself, and it shows clearly that as you go back in time, uh, it gets less and less similar. Yeah. Then it gets more similar again, and at 100 years, it's quite similar to what it was. Then it gets less similar again, and more similar at 200, and even more similar at 200 than at 100. Now, what do you mean by autocorrelation, Ray? Autocorrelation is when you compare the um, the waveform, we, we draw a graph of the of what is happening, and then we displace it various amounts, mm -hmm. and this is a lagged autocorrelation. It's and it correlates it against itself. So yes. when it's very similar, yeah. um, and in this case it's very similar because the amplitude of the cycles uh, becomes very similar after 100 years or 200 years, uh, it, and so. Um, it, it gives, has a higher correlation with itself. It's much more similar. We'll, we'll see some graphs of those where we can see that. But what this is showing clearly is something's going on around about 100 years and around about 200 years. Uh, and because that's stronger than this, we would normally expect that to be less. It means there is a 200-year cycle as well as a 100-year cycle. This shows, the black graph shows the actual solar, solar um, sunspot numbers from before 1750 through to after 2000. Um, and so you can see you can see this business that the cycle gets larger and smaller. Yes. Uh, the the red graph is a reconstruction made um, from four periods: uh, 11.8, 11.0, 10.53, 10.0 years, and also 104 and 208 years. Yes. Uh, and between those, it makes a reasonable reconstruction. It's pretty good. It's a little bit off here, uh, but uh, most of the time, and occasionally one cycle is not as big or as small as it as it should have been. But it was quite clear that. Um, uh, some time ago, you could predict that this, these current cycles were going to be a bit smaller and then it would start to increase again. Yes. Um, and that's from these two cycles. Indeed. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Uh, so that's uh, these cycles. We're going to look at these ones individually as well. This is uh, the amplitude of the solar cycle. Someone did a typo here. Um, and the green one um, is the amplitude of the solar cycle over this period, up to 2000 for 250 years. Yes. And then it's been displaced 104 years and 208 years. And we can see that um, they're agreeing that they're agreeing there's a dip here, they're agreeing there's a dip here, that there was a peak here and so on. So it gives us some idea of what we might be expecting to happen with the solar cycle o over the next uh, 100 years. Yes. Yeah. So what it's saying is we're expecting it to be low somewhere through to maybe 2020 something to be a low amplitude and then from there to start to increase. So we're already approaching that. So it's saying the next solar cycle will still be not a big one, but from there it'll be growing up again. Stepping up. Yeah. This is just the straight sunspot numbers themselves. Um, I think there's one with, I thought there was one with the years on. Um, how the sunspot numbers autocorrelate against themselves. So we move them just um, a month at a time and we correlate them against the sunspot numbers to see how similar are they at some number of different months displacement. Yes. And we see uh, once we when we go for about uh, that's about 130 months, it becomes more similar. Well, that's one um, 11 year solar cycle, right? Mm. Yes. Or something like that. Close. Yeah. Um, and the uh, each time we go one more solar cycle, it gets similar again, but it gets less and less similar. Then it starts to grow again and become much more similar at um, a little over 100 years. Then it gets less similar again and more similar um, when we get to um, 200 years. Yes. Uh, and it gets, it's more, when we do this sort of thing, normally we'd expect this one to be less strong than that, but it's actually more, which shows there's a 200 year cycle as well as a 100 year cycle. When we look at the spectrum of the sunspot numbers, uh, around the vicinity of 10 to 12 years, uh, that's the very dominant cycle of the sunspots. It's, it's called the 11-year sunspot cycle. Yeah. But in actual fact, uh, when we've got the spectrum, we can see um, that there are four peaks in this range that are quite significant, um, quite powerful cycles interacting 
Um, and so that's why it's it's got these um, changes over 100, 200 year. Um, so I've given the periods in months below and in years above, so almost exactly 10 years, 10 and a half years, just over 11 years and 11.8 years are the uh, four strong periods present uh, in the sunspot numbers. Yes. Now for those of us in the past who looked at things like the tidal forces on the sun um, or the other motions of the outer planets on the sun, um, at one stage I was pretty convinced that the periods that were present in the sunspot cycle uh, were 9.93 years, which is a Jupiter-Saturn conjunction period. Yes. Uh, and that, that would be this one, but it's actually a little bit more than that. And it may be significantly different enough to say that's not really that cycle. 11.07 uh, years, there's two things going on there. One of them is Jupiter, Venus and Earth, which are the three strongest tidal planets, um, come to good conjunctions. The tidal effects, effects on the sun. There. Yeah, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. tidal effects on the sun. Yeah, okay. and so they, so they, um, they have a period of eleven point oh seven years, which is certainly close enough to this. And there's another period relating to the outer planets, uh, similar to that. Wow. Now, um, the interesting thing about that tidal force of the inner planet of Jupiter, Venus, and Earth on the sun yep. is it's not um, regularly eleven years. It actually has two values that it flip flops. Uh, it does one three times, one four times over about an 80 year period. Uh -huh. uh, and the, the two periods are about 10.4 years and 12.0 years. Um, so, and that's because there's a, a lesser cycle of 1.6 years and you have to be on that one as well. So you get this 10.4 year period for a sunspot cycle, then you might get a 12.0, then a 10.4, and another 10.4, or whatever, uh, string together to average this. Yes. Uh, that's interesting because that's what the prediction would be of that model assuming that the tidal forces are doing it. And when you actually look at the uh, the lengths of individual sunspot cycles and make a histogram of them, yes. um, it's bimodal and the periods are 10.4 and 12.0 years. So wow. that's very, very strong evidence yeah. that um, the tidal forces of those planets on the sun yes. are related to that. And that period is very close um, to the correct period for it. Uh, so um, that does appear to be something to do with it. The other factor that we would expect to be strong is Jupiter is the biggest planet uh, yes. in, in, in several of the different models of what would explain the sunspots. There's um, Jupiter's would be important yes. uh, and it has a period of 11.86 years so the actual period we're detecting here is 11.79 is quite close to that. Yes. Um, so it does seem, this one there's no obvious planetary uh, effect going on. Um, 125.87? Uh, months, which is months, ten, and a, ten yes. and a half years, let's call it. Ten and a half uh, years. So, so there's no obvious thing there. But the other three um, are all associated with, in this case, the three strongest um, tidal effect planets. Um, sorry, the two most massive planets. Yes. The two most massive planets, which have the biggest movement of the centre of the mass of the Sun, and there's various things relating to that. In this case, the three strongest tidal planets. In this yes. case, the one most massive planet. Um, with a, whose elliptical orbit would have that effect. Ranging from 10.01 years to 11.79. Yeah. So, uh, so this is this is a particularly good spectrum. Um, it's used some uh, adjusted sunpot numbers uh, by Leif Svalgaard uh, that he put out. I think they're better than the original ones. He's gone back and adjusted some of the earlier ones because um, he thinks that perhaps they didn't pick up as many sunspot centers as they might have and things like that. Mm -hmm. Overall, it would have very little effect on these periods, the fact that it's these adjusted ones, but I've used those because I think they are the best data. Yes. Uh, so that's... Uh, now, the other thing about these ones is they interact with each other. Um, if we have a 10 and 11 year cycle, let's call them exactly 10 and exactly 11. Uh -huh. After you've had 11 cycles of that one, you will have had 10 of that and they'll come back together. If they were together at one point, in 110 years, they'd be back together again. Yes. Right? yes. 11 cycles, 11 of that, 10 of that. In actual fact, that's not exactly the figures that actually happens after 104 years. Indeed. Right? So these two will form what we call beats of 104 years. These will, close to 104 years, yeah. these two will have common beats and these two will form beats that are close to 208 years. Those periods that came up when we looked at the envelopes of the thing over the longer periods of time. Uh, so we've got. Uh, um, some sort of explanation is there appears to be a connection. Can we say it's the 104 year and 208 year modulations that are causing these things to happen? Or can we say these things are causing those to happen? Um, 
you know, it's we'll depends how you look at it. Time. It depends how you look at it. Uh, so, but the thing is that the they are clearly, clearly these things are related to the 104 and 208 year cycle. Now that 208 year cycle, we will see it again um, it, when we look at um, some uh, proxies for solar uh, output. Um, and there's a couple of different ones that are used, um, and they uh, um, they've already been put as papers on the um, Cycles Research blog, yes. um, where I did analysis for those, and they will show some other longer cycles also. Uh, it's probably worth us actually looking at that now, because we will be looking at some of those longer cycles. The, so we're particularly interested in that 104 and 208 year cycle. The 208 year one is reported much more than the 104, but it's, uh, the 104 is quite clearly there as well. Uh, and then Compound the fact of various Various yeah. cycles. Yeah, and there's um, other one. There's a two hundred two thousand three hundred year cycle as well. Yes. Uh, now, uh, I'll mention in passing here that Dewey found a point three three year cycle, or he called it seventeen and one sixth weeks, um, and he determined that very accurately because uh, you can't get it by just looking at the data and seeing it. What he did, he would average multiple cycles together, so he would take. Um, um, it's four months. You take four months of data, the next four months, the next four months, and you put them underneath each other and add them up and see the shape. And then he would plot that throughout the thing. Um, so he took the average of segments of time. He took multiple, he took the average over multiple cycles, assuming there's a cycle about that period. Yeah. He, he took the average, and then it becomes clear what you're doing when you do that. Well, it's Ray, actually a digital sure filter. Yeah. Multiple cycles within the same period. So he took yeah. an average of this cycle within well, the same period. Well, the easiest way to say is to take the entire data he's got over the many years yes. Yes. and then move it backwards by four months, yeah. move it forwards by four months, Yes. Average then average all those together. So you're now getting the average of three cycles at the middle cycle. Hmm. Um, but it's not, he's, it's not actually a cycle at that point, it's just some data. Right? Yeah. You're right. getting the average of this period, this data, and the one four months hence or four months before, and you might do the one eight months and eight months and average five together and get it. And so you can see more clearly uh, the, the data for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this one is backwards in time one, we had it before from 10,000 years ago to the present. And we can see the orange is the average of this much more fluctuating thing. Yes. Uh, and it's got this cycle present, which is averaging 2,300 years. Uh, so it's, it's, it's clearly something going on here. There's quite big swings, you know, and there probably are longer cycles, but we don't have a good records of them. So we start from that one. And when we're looking at the present time, um, we can see that um, uh, we can project that one forward and include it with the 208 year now. Um, if we get to, in, in the in the climate data, we can also see uh, just as well as we see the um, that two hundred eight year one in the uh, solar data. Yes. We can that one is very clear in the climate data as well. Uh, so uh, it's um, it's to be expected that what the sun's doing is going to reflect there. But if we don't take account of that, we're going to miss some other things. Um, so we've covered that. That's the those interesting cycles around eleven years. Yes. There are some other ones when we analyse the sunspot numbers. There are some others eight and a half years. Not nowhere near as strong as those ones in the eleven years. Yep. And there's one. There's something at five and a half years. Half of that one, yep. much weaker again. It's really just saying the shape is not exactly a sine wave. Yes. Uh, and there's some there's some other slightly longer ones. Some of which, interesting, a number of the other ones, the longer ones, do match synodic periods of pairs of the other planets. Indeed. So um, there, there's quite a lot of evidence that the planets do affect the sun. Yeah. We'll come back to that as a separate issue, which will be um, four different theories of um, of how the planets affect the sun, and uh, uh, one of which is my own idea, and um, the other ones. Well, in fact, I had one of the others of my own idea as a youngster. Only discovered somebody else had had it a long time before me. This happens quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good corroboration. I had this lovely table of related suns, of related cycles periods that I'd found harmonically related, and uh, I went along. Then I found out about the Cycles Foundation, and I went along, and Ed O'Doherty had published it. 
<laughs> sometime before. Well, they that's published marvelous. It, they published it sometime before I found it. Yeah, but people keep telling me it was my imagination, but I knew it wasn't because he'd found the same thing. Using different data from different countries and different time periods, he found the same cycles periods. Yes, well, I yeah. think the corroborating effect will come not only yeah. through research, but through the increased tools of science that we now have yeah. and the vast amount of research that's increasing as a result. So yeah. uh, you're helping pave the way with this. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, so this is if you take the, um, this is what I call a wrap. What I do is I take the long series we've got of data, yep. um, and then whatever period I'm looking at, which is the wrap period, in this case 9.926 years, yep. I break it into pieces that long, I put them all under each other, and I average them out. Indeed. In this case, I've done it with 9.926 years. Now that's not the main sun cycle period, and the 11 year peak will be moving uh, by a year each time of this, and over 100 years, it'll be in every different place. Yeah. So, the, so the major cycle will be sometimes a peak there, 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 there. But when we average it, this ranges from about um, 26 up to about 76. In other words, a 3 to 1 ratio. So what that means is, when the 11 year cycle is running the opposite way to this, it's going to be dampened down. When it's running the same way, it's going to be increased up. Uh, and we can see that that cycle uh, is... Um, is uh, very clearly running through the entire history uh, of the sunspot numbers, um, and that's the Jupiter Saturn conjunction period. So, huh. um, and then um, this one is Jupiter's period around the sun, 11.862 years. Jupiter on its own would be important, but simply because uh, it's the most massive planet, it has yes. an eccentric orbit. Um, the difference between its closest and furthest approach is 10%. Mm. Um, it's the east interesting is five percent, ten percent, which means the gravitational effect on the sun would be twenty percent different. And we see here this one again, ranging from about um, twenty-eight or so up to about seventy-five. So quite a, uh, a big effect uh, on that. Indeed. Yeah. So um, it's these. Are, I call this a wrap. Uh, it's a technique that Dewey also used, and with, and with a slight variation, you can see other cycles either side of it as well. Yes. Uh, he would put them all out horizontally as darker and lighter patches and you can actually see them through there uh, and he had a little machine for spinning it and doing different things Wow! Uh, because um, he didn't have the computers to do it. No, it's amazing uh, he got the results he did. It is, yeah. Very good, very good. Solar Cycles with Ray Thames of the Cycles Research Institute. Thank you and people can find out more at the cyclesresearchinstitute.org. general, solar yeah. cycles in general. Yeah, and in particular what we've got here, uh, there are a couple of different uh, um, proxies that are used for solar cycles. This one is beryllium-10, BE-10, solar irradiance reconstruction. So beryllium-10 is considered to be a proxy for um, solar output. Yes. Um, and what's happened here, the, the line in black is the measurements of the solar output yes. from 7,300 or 400 BC through to more or less the present yes, uh, to about 2000 and um, then what's been done here is the 10, ten uh, long cycles that are significant, most significant uh, ranging from 86 years to 2,155 years have been fitted to it Yes. Um, to give the, the best fit over this period and then there's a little bit of projection on the end there. So what we've got here is cycles of 2,155 years, 975, yep. 715, about 351, about 207, 129, 122, 105, 91 and a half, 86. Now I've mentioned several times a 208 and a 104 year cycle so we've got those there, uh, very, cl very close. close to those. Yes. Um, I, I don't know if I've mentioned but um, uh, Chizevsky came up with a 355-year cycle, and that's quite close to that. Uh, considering the length of the period, that's probably quite okay, acceptable. So when you mentioned the 208 cycle, you've got a 206.9 here. When yep. you mentioned the 104 cycle, you've got a 104.7 here. Yep. And Chizevsky, uh, we've got a 350.8 yep. versus his, which was? 355. 355. Now, you may remember, uh, or we may not have done yet, but when we do, uh, Dewey's table has a 17.75 year cycle and a 35.5 year cycle and, and there I said there's a ratio of 5 above that. So that will that will fit to um, Chizewski 355 and this will fit to that moderately well. Um, 
I have mentioned the 2300 year cycle. Now, when you get um, the longer cycles, when you've got this matter, we've only got a little over three cycles in here. So that might be a 2300 year cycle. You know, the, these figures at this end will be much more accurate than these ones at this end. Yes. Uh, uh, so that might be that cycle. We haven't got, um, you, you, if, if you have 30,000 years, you get a much more accurate uh, figure on that. Yes. Uh, but we see that it's, um, it's doing a moderately good fit. There's some um, extensions on the actual data that shoot a bit more each way uh, so it's um, they may be just slightly erratic measurements and uh, that we don't fit it but we're getting the general trend of a lot of the stuff um, and we've got a projection here which interestingly um, doesn't go um, up high again until 2200 so it's the 200 year cycle uh, you remembered I said it was down in 1900, up in 2000. So this is that, that's one of the most the strongest ones. So it's saying down in 2100, up in 2200. It's projecting that. Yes. Um, uh -huh. but, but there is a little bit in there which will be the 104 year cycle probably. Well, we do seem to have an upward zigzag going on the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there is an uptrend here, uh, and this is the 2000 uh, something year cycle, um, which was low uh, back here um, in the uh, um, 1500 ish area mm -hmm. um, there were some pretty cold patches there um, yeah and we can see it's up here down here etc indeed yes. yeah. so this one um, I mentioned that sometimes Dewey averaged over three cycles that's what I've done here uh, I've taken three cycles averaged together to filter out uh, the 207 year cycle on this um, and you can see that it is present um, that cycle is present over the entire period, although a few times it gets a bit weak. Right? Mm -hmm. But it's been quite strong for the last um, 3,000 years. Yes. And um, it's um, and again, you can see the um, where it's uh, low in 1500, high in 1600, low in 1700, high in 18, low in 19, high in 2000, low in 21, high in 2200. Um, yes. It will move slightly relative to the centuries because of that seven, but uh, it's pretty much on those for that period. Yes. Um, and this is the spectrum of that, which is what was was used um, to do those um, projections. So this is the spectrum showing which how strong the site, relatively strong the cycles are, and you can see that the two, this two hundred and seven year one, mm -hmm. uh, the spectrums usually go like that a bit. Um, so you can see that one is especially strong, stands out strong, and the 104 is quite strong as well. Yes, uh, yes. And um, these other ones are okay. Yes. Because um, um, you're very close at 206.86 for yeah. the 208 and 104.69 for the 104. Yeah. Um, uh, the, these red numbers, is this data is only every five years, so these are in the units which were five-year units, and then I've put them blue above them what they were in, yeah. um, in, in the um, in years. We're looking at the sunspot number reconstruction for 11,000 years for yep. radiocarbon in tree, tree rings. rings from Solanke et al. 2005. Yeah, uh, and again, you can see um, there's a bit of a peak here. Yeah. But um, there's been times when, been, when it's been higher, you know. Yes. So um, the, um, we've recently, the, the tree ring things say that um, we've had bigger cycles recently, which is true, we have. Uh, but there have been times in the past where that's so also. Indeed. Uh, and that sun, and sunspot number is um, pretty much the same thing as the measurement of um, irradiance. When there's more sunspots, the sun's brighter. Yes. You've got some black dots on it, but the rest of it's brighter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, that's, so, there, so that's that one. Yeah. And then we'll just look at some of these others to see what's useful. So here it is with the um, with two cycles fitted, uh, a 6,600. Now, now the people who did this note there's a 6,600 year 600 year cycle, um, and there's this one as well. Well, let me uh, just note five. what the chart is that we have up right now, which is the sunspot number reconstruction based on carbon 14 and tree rings from 9,455 BCE to 1985 CE. No, no. And 18, 1895. Uh, 1895 CE. Thank you. And you've got two cycles fitted. 6,600 years and 2,245 years. Yeah, so I've said to you that there's, there's usually a 2,300 year cycle. Well, that's um, and close. that's close to that, given that we've only got three cycles or so in there. Well, yeah. no, we've got more, about five. And, um, and from this, we can say that um, the last low was one about 1,200, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, um, and it's still on the way up from that. 
uh, for a little yes. while yet, but um, we will peak out in a couple of hundred years. Um, in the 6600 year cycle, uh, we're about to be up on that again as well. So in these long term trends... And that's uh, about uh, 2293 would be the next maxima? Yeah, yeah. Okay. so the, of that one, and that, yes. that one for this one. So. Uh, we should say the 2300 year cycle, I would say, is reasonably well accepted as something that exists. Yeah. The 6600 year cycle is um, being stated as a possibility because we haven't got enough data mm. to say that that's real. Yes. Um, so it's, it's, you'll find it in Wikipedia, mm -hmm. um, but you'll find it probably worth just a little bit of a question mark on it. Right? Yes. So I, I like to do this to say what's accepted. Um, I would say that's a tentative one. Very good, very good, yes. Uh, uh -huh. This one again. Uh, this it, one means the sunspot number reconstruction filtered over three successive cycles for 210 years. So I had the other one I called it 208. It's the same thing because we're only right. filtering for three cycles, so it makes very little difference what we if we do is fairly similar to there. But again, you can see it's present most of the time with a couple of periods where uh, where it goes a little bit not hard to see, but it's been present for some time um, as a as a two cycle in that range. Um, and again, it's um, there's 1500, it's low, 1600, high, 17, 18, 19, 2000, right? So it's, um, uh, it's the centuries at the moment. This is um, looking at, um, so the, the red cycle is a 250 year moving average. What a 250 year moving average will do, it'll get rid of the cycles shorter than that period. Mm. Um, and uh, we're looking really here, is there a cycle, it came out of this one, there's one of about 521 years. Now you may remember that Wheeler had a 510 year climate cycle. Yes, uh, with This said 521, so that's possibly the same thing as that. And uh, the green one's a little hard yeah, to see, but um, uh, we've, we've got it there and we're just seeing, does the red one follow that very much? It does a bit in places, it's not perfect by any means, but it, 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 t it tends to be so, it tends to follow it, so we can say, um, there well, seems to be right that there's something for that. For, that for sort of sunspot period. number reconstruction from radiocarbon and tree rings uh, at all at yeah. 2005. So a best fit is 521, of course, yeah. correlating somewhat with Wheeler's 510 year cycle. Yeah, now of course, this is a climate cycle and this is a solar cycle. Yes. Um, but we would expect any cycle of that length um, in the sun to show up in climate. So this is sort of an agreement between this reconstruction of the sun and uh, well as um, that is cycle. very interesting yeah, and significant yeah, yeah. Um, this one has um, got a um, the same red one uh, and it's showing the best fit 2250 year cycle now Ray you used the 510 year centered moving average for yeah, this yeah um, and so your best fit is a 2250 year cycle yeah okay. so the moving average is just to get rid of the uh, shorter cycles and we can see that there's something going on but um, where is it did a dip there and a trough and a dip and a trough and it followed it there and a little bit of a dip and a trough a dip it suddenly did an extra dip in the trough there so uh, it's not perfect by any means but it, it is showing there is something in 2250 year cycle is the best fit uh, and on that basis um, it's um, went through a dip again about uh, 11, 1200 AD. Mm -hmm. So it's up for another couple of hundred years yet. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that's oh, that's the spectrum of it, um, showing that the 6,600 year one that they proposed, uh, a 2245 um, cycle. 973, now again, uh, we had a thousand year cycle. Mm -hmm. There's two peaks there, 560 and 520 years. Uh, the 520 is the bigger one, and uh, Wheeler had a 510. 443, um, not as big as the others. 352, that again uh, is close to Chizhevsky's 355 year cycle. And as well as a 208 here, we've got a 224. Now, I think the other one didn't have that second one there, so there's two components. We might look at the beats between those, and we'd get uh, the beats between those would be uh, the difference between them, which is less than 17 years, divided into one is about 12 times the other is about 2,600. So the beats between those might actually match with this longer cycle, and that's not that's reasonably common. But there's a few other ones here. Again, we've got the 104 year one, and it's a reasonably strong one. Um, and we've got a, I've gone slightly short this time. You'll see there's a whole cluster of cycles around the 55 to 60 year mark, um, two of them very close to 60 years. Um, that's something that shows up a lot uh, in the climate record. So this is sunspot number, 
but the climate record shows very clear 60-year cycle, but sometimes it gets a little bit shorter. So that seems to be an interaction of this group. Yes. Uh, 44 years is um, four times the, the main sunspot. So we know there's 11 in a 22, 44, and there's an 88, right? Yes. So that, that sequence is we've got doublings again in the sun, and that's a pretty strong one there. That's the strongest one in its range. Um, so uh, the sun has got a cascading effect uh, of those uh, yes. uh, doublings. And Indeed. we're seeing another series with 104 and the 208 doubling, but there don't seem to be any more beyond that. Oh, that, one, that one's got uh, on the graphic those things, the notes that I made there, so these are the names of them, the Hellstat. The 2300 year cycle is called the Hellstat cycle. Yes. Uh, Chizevsky had the 355. And the 208 year cycle is called De Vries or Seuss. And uh, Wheeler had 100 and 510. Indeed. Oh, that one's include. That one's just showing how the 104 and 208 year uh, fit to the more recent sunspot record, right? Yes. Um, and we can see. Well, certainly it did a big, big dip here and a dip here, and the uh, the bigger peaks here, here and here. So uh, on that basis, and we know that we've currently had um, a much smaller than these previous cycles uh, sunspot peak. Uh, and what this is saying. Um, as the next peak in the 2020s should be smaller and then from there it should, should also be fairly small and from there it should be starting to rise. Sometimes yes. I get that this one should be already starting to rise but it's something like that. We are either uh, have already passed or are very near to the trough in the 104 and 208 year cycles. Mm -hmm. So that's very important because those things um, are in the sun, they're also in the climate and we can say the rise in the 20th century in temperatures fits very much with the rise and the strength of the sunspot cycle in that period and the and the temperatures show the same thing so there's quite a connection between those uh, different ones. Uh, we're looking here we, we saw there was a little cluster of cycles around 11 years yes. 10, 11, 12 and 10 and a half yes. and, and they interacted. Uh, this is another way of expressing that same thing yes. it's saying relative to a constant 11 year cycle what has the sunspot cycle done and so we call this the phase drift so uh, that, uh, if it had been a constant 11 year cycle, this would just be a horizontal line through here. You can see it does end up where, near where it started. So on average, it's been just teensiest bit uh, over 11 years. Okay. Uh, but during this period, uh, it was drifting one way um, relative to where it should have been and this just period the other way and so on and backs and forwards. Now I've put some things on here to indicate that when you go in this way, if it was going at that angle, it would be running at a 10-year cycle. Yes. And so in this period here, and this period here, it was running pretty much at a 10-year cycle. Mm -hmm. These ones, it was running even shorter um, yes. for several, for, for quite a few years, for, for a number of successive cycles, right? Yes. Uh, if it was running like that, it would be a 12-year cycle. So about this period and maybe here, um, but um, in this period here, it was running at even longer than 12 years, right? It's more steep than that one. So we can see the phase. And between here and here, the phase has drifted by three quarters of a cycle. If you drift by half of a cycle, you now got the peaks where the troughs were and the troughs where the peaks were. Yeah. If you drift by three quarters, you're going right around and back again. Um, we do that. But even though, even when we average it over the whole thing there, we still get a cycle. But a lot of it's being cancelled out by this phase wandering, right? Yeah. So uh, Phase draft a solar cycle relative to fixed 11-year cycle. Yeah. Great. So it's... Uh, it's um, it's it's an alternative way of looking at it. Yeah. Do we use to do something like that with a... Um, um, a column here and he would make darker marks for where it was the data was higher and lighter where it was lower and so on yeah. and you'd color one cycle the next the next the next the next the next the next and then you can see um, you can see this pattern of the drifts in the different places you know it's, yeah. it's similar, this is a, a more precise mathematically one to do it but yes. you could, you could, he, he did have a trick to see that same thing um, so this is actually working on one cycle. How does it fit in one cycle and then at one cycle that's a little bit forward. It's comparing it to a sine wave all the time. Indeed. Okay. Yes. Um, that's the same thing. It's just got slightly sharper numbers. Pick which one you like. Nah. <laughs> um, okay. Well, this is a solar cycle as well. The periodicity and sunspot numbers near the solar rotation period. Yeah. So this is, uh, sir, this is from 08 until 1928. From 1818. To 2010. 1818 to 2010. So we've got 192 years there. Yeah. Uh, now, I've mentioned that the solar rotation is not constant. That's uh, true. It's, yeah. it's, mm -hmm. um, it varies with uh, latitude, it varies with depth, and so on. We're only looking at the surface because the sunspots. 
and they are just where they happen to be because at different stages of the sunspot cycle they appear spread around at different latitudes. So we've got some motion that way. What this is, is the, is the number of sunspots on the sun on a daily basis uh, over 192 years um, and the, uh, each peak here represents um, a significant cycle that's found in the sunspots. Yes. The blue ones are significant at the point zero 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 one level which is normally considered uh, a very very strong significance, yes. right? That one would think. The orange ones at point zero 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 one, and the red yes. ones at point zero 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 one. So there's only one chance in a million of getting uh, something that uh, that strong. Yeah. Uh, so you can see there's multiple periods in the sunspot cycle. Yep. What does it mean? Yeah. Um, does it mean that it's um, it has got some very strong cycle at that period, but it's wandering about, and the result of those wandering about happens to produce those, possibly. Uh, or maybe there's some underlying reason for some of these. In some cases, the beats between those may tell us something significant. There may be a longer cycle. Um, so it, the way we can calculate beats is if we take these two, which are very close together and both very strong, we take the difference between them, which is 0.15 years about, Mm -hmm. uh, we then divide it into one of them, because, so that's how many cycles we'll have to go to get 0.15 days up to 27 days, right? Yes. Um, and in this case it's um, 0.15 into there is almost 200. Then we multiply it the other one, which is length of one cycle, which is almost a month. Uh, so it's, it's going to be, in this case, about 170 or something, 180 months, yes. which is about 15 years. Uh, it doesn't appear to tie up with the solar cycle. Uh, but if we looked at different ones, we may find some pairs which line up with either the 11 or 22 year solar cycle, in which case uh, we would say this pair is really one thing that's being modulated by the solar cycle. Now, I did that roughly in my head, I might have made a mistake, but that's the method for working out uh, beats. You take the, um, you multiply one period by the other and divide it by the difference between them, and that will give you the beats. Yes. Um, so that's a useful thing to know in a lot of cases. Uh, so that's uh, this um, some cycles that are very strong and that we have a very lot of data like we do here um, you know we've got 192 years and there's about 13 cycles per year so we've got close to 3,000 cycles mm. um, if the cycle is not exactly constant in time we will typically get multiple peaks in the thing and the exact meaning of them um, is debatable or there's different ways of looking at it you know you can say it is the interaction of these periods um, but before you said that you'd probably want to look at breaking the period into parts and see does the same thing happen in each part if it does you'd say yep those periods are real they are stable over a period of time and so on otherwise we'd say it's, there's a period in that range and it's wandering about a bit and somehow these come that, that it's hard to imagine them being that significant in that case. Indeed. Um, uh, this is the, sol the sunspot cycle. I mentioned the 154 day uh, yes. period around and that range. And we have a monthly mean sunspot numbers transformed by lambda equals 0 0.52. Now if it was lambda 0.5 it would be the square root which is what I used elsewhere. Um, and uh, in this case, what I've done, um, I've used a three cycle filter. So I've taken um, the fluctuations about a mean, um, about a moving average, and I've then done them over th average over three cycles to produce this red graph, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the actual sunspot numbers. Yep. This, this is the um, filter, filtered to a three, a three cycle filter, and you can see. Um, these other guys were saying that the cycle exists during the peaks and that, in actual fact it fades out a little bit there but you can actually follow it through the troughs as well so you can see the uh, 150 day cycle there present most of the time um, present pretty much all the time there's a pl few places here where it seems to go to about double the thing so we did have a 77 day one and it looks like here the 77 day one is is dominating over the 154 uh, if we did a spectral analysis we'd probably find that, that both are present but um, one it's gone from the 154 day one and it's got a little bit weaker and the 77's got stronger. Yes. That sort of thing happens, uh, can happen when um, the amount of energy getting put into that particular thing changes. When you get more energy, you're more likely to get the, the second harmonic, which is the 77 day one, right? Yes. Um, that's what happens when you do that with the raw sunspot numbers. 
Yeah. Uh, and that's what the other guys were doing that published the papers. So they're finding the cycle in this period, in this period, but not so much in this period. So that's why um, the taking the square root or using the lambda function uh, does make this more consistent throughout the whole period than what it is in this case. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the, the um, advantage of using so Lambda that. equals 0 0.52. Yeah. This is the monthly mean sunspot numbers transformed by 0.52 for a period of uh, um, from 1750-odd through to after to 2100 odd. Um, so it's, um, you can see the, the important thing here is compared to the original sunspot number data, the bottoms of these were all squashed up, right? It was yes. as if you'd put a line there and um, crunched them up against that. And you adjusted case, your formula of analysis to yeah. compensate for that. Yeah, so what we've got here, you can see that the amount of oscillations near the peak is about the same as the amount of oscillations near the trough. So we've transformed the data into a form which is suitable for following shorter cycles through um, all of the, for, through the troughs and the peaks. Yes. And that's um, so we had the um, that was the original data, and that is the transformed data um, without the red one in it as well. And you can see there's about the same amount of variation at the troughs as there is at the peaks now. Yes, so is. when we're looking for a shorter term cycle, that's what we want because we want to trace that right through. Yes.